Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. In previous videos, I've demonstrated asynchronous behaviors in JavaScript, but I haven't talked specifically about it. What is asynchronous, or for short, async JavaScript? And it's a very important thing to learn because async behaviors are everywhere in JavaScript. So to understand async, let's first talk about synchronous or sync JavaScript. And if you've wrote any code before, you're probably already familiar with uh, synchronous JavaScript. Uh, let's take this example here. We have, we're going to use the um, FS module to read from the file system. And we have a few files here, uh, one bear, two bear, and three bear. And all we're going to do is we're going to read each of these files and uh, console log out each one. So I'm going to go here to my debugger. I'm going to type node debug index and get this fired up. Okay, now let's step through this program uh, one line at a time just to see how JavaScript is going to run all of this code. And so if we step to the next line, it's going to start uh, with one and start reading that file. And as soon as it finishes reading this file, then it's going to have access to the contents of that file. And we can then console log it out. And as soon as it finishes that console log, then it's going to move on to reading the to file. And as soon as it finishes reading the to file, then it's going to move on to this line, line number six, and console log that out. And keep in mind, it's, it's waiting to actually finish reading this entire file into memory before it logs out uh, to the console and moves on to the next line. So now synchronous APIs are really easy to understand because they just go you know, in one step at a time. They, they wait for things to finish. So you can really just write out things in a very linear fashion and, and kind of understand how things are going. But the problem is, is that what happens when uh, two.bear here, what, what happens when this file is a really large file? Uh, what's gonna happen here is that your entire program is gonna stop and it's gonna wait to finish reading this really large file before it even bothers doing anything else. So while synchronous code is uh, a lot easier to write and to read, it can cause some serious performance issues. Uh, JavaScript runs in a single thread, or in other words, can only do one thing at a time, so you should really avoid blocking that single thread uh, whenever possible. So how do we avoid blocking? Well, let's convert our program to use the asynchronous APIs instead. We're gonna remove the sync part and it no longer returns a, a result from this, um, but instead it, this is telling JavaScript to start reading the file, and we need, and then we're going to supply a callback uh, or a function for it to call when it has finished reading the file. And so we'll supply that as a second argument here. And then per the Node.js uh, convention, the first argument uh, passed back is if there's an error. And the second one is the contents of the file that we've read. And so we can move this console log within this callback function here. And let's just go ahead and do the same for the, the other two. There, we've converted our program to use the asynchronous APIs instead. So let's go ahead and see how this will run in, as comparison to the, the asynchronous APIs here. So now when I step through my program, it's going to queue up to start reading these files, but it's not going to wait until the entire file is read into memory before moving on and reading the next file. Instead, all it's saying is start reading this file, and when you're done, call this function with the contents of the file. And so if we set some breakpoints here, we can get some uh, an idea of the, the asynchronous behavior that's going on. So as we step through each one, it's going to queue up to start reading each one of these files. And then the next thing we do here is when we hit this breakpoint, you see that it has finished reading file one here. So now watch this. You would expect it to finish with two before three, but since three is a smaller file than two, three has finished first. And then we go on and then two has finished. This is async JavaScript. Now keep in mind, my program isn't faster because I'm using async APIs. JavaScript is still a single thread. It's still doing one thing at a time. The only thing that the async APIs are doing is that it lets JavaScript do a little bit of each task at a time. And so it splits it up a little bit. So if one task, such as reading this large two bear file, uh, takes a, a little bit of a longer time, it's not going to hold up any of the other lines that also want to, uh, to access the JavaScript thread. Getting comfortable with async behavior in JavaScript is really important because even if you don't care about blocking code, there's a lot of APIs in JavaScript that don't give you a synchronous choice. For example, in the browser, 
If we want to submit a network request, this is going to take a little time to go out to the server and download the response packet. And a synchronous API isn't available to do this. You must write async code. So let's switch out our file system uh, example here with a, a browser one. This example will do the same thing as our last example, but rather than reading from the file system, it's gonna send out network requests for these files. So I'm gonna go here and start up my server with npm start. And so we're gonna go over to the uh, sources tab here, click into our index source and add some breakpoints to uh, have it stop and tell us what it's doing. So now I'm going to refresh the page and it's going to stop here on this line that we've set this breakpoint for. And we can just add some breakpoints here when we expect these lines to call. And so as you can see, the same thing as our file system, it's going to queue up these, uh, these requests, um, but it's not going to block uh, JavaScript. It's going to let JavaScript start queuing up more requests and it's going to call this function when it has finished. Uh, when the has gone all the way out to the server and it's got the, all the contents of the file and downloaded it all back, it's going to reset this uh, this variable here and call this function to uh, for us to use that file. So we'll just step through here, and just the same, you'll notice. Oh, well, this one's a little different. Uh, the network request for our our, our three dot bear uh, finished before the one dot bear, and then you can see the one dot bear finishes next, and then finally. It's a big file, it took a while, but JavaScript was, in the meantime, I, when, it, when it took that while, it was still uh, able to do other things while it was downloading each of those pieces in the background. But now this big giant file is finally done and it's, uh, it's able for us to, to read this giant buffer here. So hopefully you're aware by this point that with asynchronous uh, APIs, uh, the order in which that they finish and they you know run is not guaranteed. Uh, sometimes this one can finish first, sometimes this one can finish first. And this is what's so frustrating about asynchronous code, uh, for, especially if you're not familiar with it, is, is you know how do you deal with that? And so if we wanted to change this example, say we needed to request one first and then we needed to request two second and then three next, the simple thing we can do is just to put these nested inside each other. And so then what this will happen is it will start requesting one and when one's finished, then we can start requesting two. And when two's finished, we can start requesting three. Now, if this gets too nested for you, then you can simply add a uh, another function here. Uh, let's call this next, and move this uh, nested portion down to this next here. And then we can say, okay, one two bear has finished. We'll call the next one, and we'll move on to here, and we can go on from here. Now, this is one way to do it. But what if we don't care uh, the order in which they run? We only care to know when each of them are done. Uh, well, let's create a function that will be called uh, when all three of them are done here, and then let's keep count of how many have ran, and we'll increment this every time done is called here. And so now each one of these will call, when, when they each have finished, they'll call this done function, which then will increment this count. And so then all we simply have to do is just say if the count is greater than or equal to three, then we know we are all done. So let's go ahead and run this program here. And you can see it stops here at our nets. And let's add a breakpoint here for count. And then I have a watch uh, defined here, um, which is going to watch the variable count here. Um, so anytime that variable is within the scope, it's gonna print out the results here. So now as we step through, it's going to queue up each of our files and start reading those or sending off the network request to, to start reading those. And then when each has finished, you can see here, if we go here into the trace, uh, we get this anonymous function which refers to one bear. So it looks like one bear has finished first and then called this done function, which then has incremented our count. And so our count's now at one, but it doesn't equal three because all three have not finished yet. Only one has, uh, so we're not all done yet. And so if we go to the next one, we could see that the three dot bear has finished next. Our count is at two. And then we go to the next one and you can see that our count has uh, is now at three. The function that was called was here at two dot bear. And since now our function is at three 
and uh, we can print out uh, all done. And we know that all three of them are done and we can move on. So dealing with async code is known as async flow control. Uh, we're controlling the flow at which the code runs and we can set up expectations on when things, certain things will be done and we can move on to other parts of our program. Now there are a ton of solutions out there uh, uh, for dealing with async flow control. Um, I did another video um, uh, specifically about using just callbacks uh, for async flow control. I'll put a link uh, to that one up. I did another one um, on promises, uh, um, about using promises as a way to deal with async uh, behaviors. Um, another great library to check out on NPM is just called async. Uh, it's a very popular and uh, widely used uh, library. There certainly isn't a shortage of async flow control solutions out there, and I encourage you to try each one and do whatever it takes to get comfortable writing async code. Your programs will run so much more efficiently and it will open the door to many great things in JavaScript for you. So hopefully this video has helped you understand what asynchronous JavaScript is, and if it has, then uh, please share the video, and uh, if you want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.